Hey, hey, how is going? Mike Kleinert here. Today I'm going to show you how to stylize your photos and make them stand out more with a couple of slides. Let me introduce you to Photograde, the point and click grading tool for eye-catching photos to create the look you want with the real-time LUT previews for faster, easier grading. So stay tuned. Welcome back fellow content creators. Let me guide you through the process and how to use Photocrate step by step and if this is worth your money. First, let's talk about Photocrate. You may know Cinemacrate, which allows you to color grade your modi footage in as little as a minute. Thanks to Denver, we now have Photocrate. It uses the same interface and point and click grading as Cinemacrate. The tool is super powerful and has a lot of features that professional colorists are using. It includes features such as vector scope, false colors, LUTs and looks. No worries if this sounds new to you, I'm here to help you. Photocrate you can use as a standalone app and it comes with an integrated plugin for Photoshop and Lightroom Classic to color grade your photos. If you use any other editing software, you easily can export photos as JPEGs or TIFFs and then edit them in Photocrate. As a Lightroom and Photoshop user you may know how complex it can be to get the right photo look as there are so many steps and ways to achieve the look you want. Photocrate is the solution for creating the looks you envision. You will be amazed and your photos will receive more attention with this tool. As I walk you through Photocrate step by step, I will show you the power and the time-saving techniques to help you decide if this is the right program for you. So let's don't waste time and you will see the rest later. Step 1. Price package option and discount codes. Photocrate has three package options, basic, pro and studio. If you want to speed up your editing workflow, you should get at least the Photocrate Pro. The studio version offers the best value since you also have the bonus film add-ons, including adding film grain and having 30 assets, colorist presets, along with 22 different film stocks like Fuji or Kodak. You will also get access to a color grading academy to learn more about color grading photos. Denver teaches you with practice images the look you want to achieve. The studio version is what I most of the time recommend to other creators. What even more cool is, I don't want to let you wait until the end to give you the 20% discount code which is Mike for Photograde which I got from Denver for you to save some cash. Not only that you get this discount I also get a little commission from it. You will also help and support me here on this channel. Where do you enter the discount code? Super easy. At the last prompt of the checkout where you enter the payment details click on got a code enter here Mike and then press apply. You can also find the link and the discount code in the description down below. What's even more cool this is only a one-time payment for only $159 for the studio version for Ever. No subscription fee here. Step 2. Download and install. After you bought Photograde, you download then your software for Windows or for Mac and then we're coming to the install part. After installation and then you open Photograde, you copy here your activation code. It will also install a Lightroom and a Photoshop plugin. Step 3. How to use Photograde. Here we'll explain the interface and the shortcuts. Take your time to understand everything I explain here or rewatch it later. In Photocrate, everything is laid out in order of how you should use the adjustment slider going in the menu panel from left to right and in the inspector panel from the top to the bottom. To leave the inspector panel always open, click the pin icon here. At the bottom, if you click the arrow to see all the thumbnails of your photos you have in your project. Speaking of projects, in Photocrate you can save your project which is similar to a catalog in Lightroom. To avoid losing your editing settings, save your project before closing Photocrate. Go to files at the menu bar and click on save project as. Create then a folder where you want to save your project. Which file types are supported in Photograde and does it support RAW photos? Most people ask me this question and currently it supports JPEGs, BNG and TIFF files. However, Photograde installed a plugin for Lightroom Classic and Photoshop where you can edit your RAW and DNG photos first and then send them as a JPEG or TIFF to Photograde to stylize your photos. If people reach out to the support and asking if they can implement the RAW and DNG workflow in the standalone app, there might be at this feature. How to get raw photos from Lightroom or Photoshop 
to Photograde. Let's start with my favorite program, Adobe Lightroom Classic. You can do some basic edits or sharpen the photos first, then select the photos you want to send to Photograde. Then right click on the selected photos and go to Edit In. Then choose Photograde JPEG 8-bit or TIFF with 16-bit which has more dynamic range. Voila! Lightroom prepares the raw photos to make copies as JPEGs or TIFFs and then import them to Photograde. If you cannot see the plugins in Lightroom, you need to go to the Lightroom symbol here in the menu bar. Then go to settings and choose preset and then make sure storage presets with catalog is turned off. When using Photoshop, open your photos, then go to plugins in the menu bar and choose photograde. Choose then the folder for the temporary file location. Then you have the option to send the image or the current layer to edit in photograde. Before we start editing in Photograde, you should know these tools. There are six ways to change every adjustment via the menu bar, in the app menu bar, in the inspector panel on the right, then right click on the preview photos here, open the thumbnail bar in the bottom, then right click on the image or the quickest way, keyboard shortcuts. Learning all these shortcuts will speed up your editing workflow even more. In the description box there is a link I provide for you which is a PDF with all the shortcuts. Feel free to download these. Now we are coming to scopes. What are scopes? To ensure the photo corrected correctly, three scopes are available. Waveform, Vector scope and histogram. To open the scope, you go in the menu bar in view and click on scope. Or you use the shortcut option command P will then open vector scope. Besides changing the viewer and the scope size, you can also change the mode from the waveform RGB overlay to RGB parrot or at the vector scope the trace size. We're coming now to Files Color. Filmmakers and colorists are familiar with Files Color, which is a heat map for Image Exposer. To open Files Color, select View in the menu, then Files Color, or press the shortcut Option Command F. We will be able to see if the highlights are burned out, or when the shadows are too milky or too dark. The scale on the left side intends to show you if the exposure is done correctly. Then use the Exposer tool and drag up and down in the area you want to change. By doing that, the red area shows you if it's overexposed, there need to be in the yellow part. And the purple areas are for the blacks or the shadows, needs to be dark to slightly blue. The skin tone should be lay by gray, green and, and pink areas. To check how it looks, disable the first color by pressing again Option, Command and F. How do you import and manage your own LUTs? Navigate to the edit panel in the menu bar, then click preference and the window opens where you can add or remove folders with your own LUT so they show up later in the LUT gallery. At images you can change photo grade, export settings for JPEGs, TIFF and PNG. At savings you can change the way photo gets saved and renamed. If you use Lightroom, leave the first option. Step 4. Step by step color grading workflow. Photocrate has three sections, basic correction, batch processing and final grading. Basically, first you correct your photos, then you group and match them all and then you stylize to give your photo a look and mood. I know it was a lot, but to understand the tool will help you to speed up your workflow. Let's move on to the fun part. Let's start first with basic correction. In this section, you can adjust the photo exposure, color balance, such as white balance, contrast, saturation and the color hue. Before we correct the image, we open the vector scopes to stay in the correct range area and not over or under expose your photo. Exposure adjustment. To adjust the exposure, click the exposure control icon in the menu panel or use the keyboard shortcut by pressing E. Then click anywhere and drag up to increase or down to decrease the overall exposure. The shadow, midtones and highlights can be adjusted by long pressing the exposure icon or with the shortcut shift and E. For adjusting the brightness of an area, click a bright area for the highlights, a dark area for the shadows or a midtone which is mostly the gray areas for the midtones. Then move up and down to adjust the brightness level. 
to avoid overexposing or underexposing, pay attention to the waveform and the histogram. In the waveform RGB overlay mode, it represents the image and you can see the highlights or the whites on the top and the shadows or the black on the bottom. In order to avoid clipping the exposure, you have to stay in the 0 or 100 range. The RGB parrot is the most popular because you can also adjust the color shifts more easily. The histogram analyzes the exposure, color balance and the luminar level. Shadows are shown on the left with 0 IRE, which is absolute black, while highlights are shown on the right with 100 IRE, which is absolute white. You should have a good balance in the histogram so there are not huge gaps on the left or on the right, so your photo isn't overexposed or underexposed. Contrast adjustment. To adjust the contrast and the pivot for the contrast, click the symbol in the menu bar or use the shortcut C. Then click and drag up and down anywhere in the photos to increase or decrease the contrast. Always keep an eye on the histogram and the waveform to avoid going over the limits. To fine tune the contrast, use the pivot. With a long holding on the contrast icon, you can choose the pivot or with the shortcut Shift plus C, then click and drag up and down to adjust it. White balance and saturation adjustment. To adjust the white balance automatically, press the shortcut A or in the menu panel. It does a really pretty good job, but sometimes you want to adjust it manually. To adjust the color temperature manually, click on the symbol in the menu bar or use the shortcut W to make your image more warm or colder. Change the color tint with pressing the shortcut Shift W to add more green or magenta. Check the waveform and balance the RGB waveform to almost the same line. Click the saturation icon in the menu bar or use the shortcut S to adjust the overall saturation. To fine tune the saturation of the highlights, shadows or midtones, long press on the shadow icon or use the shortcut Shift plus S, then click on the area you want to increase or decrease the saturation. My favorite tool is the vector tool, which is the last tool in the menu panel, or by hitting the shortcut V to adjust the hue, where you can change the color appearance parameters. Simply click on the color area you would like to change and it will add a cross for the color on this spot. Let's say here and then click the area and drag up and down to change the hue of this blue for more violet or till. This way you can change super fast and easy the hue of any color in your photos. When clicking on the color cross again and by holding the shift key, you can then change the color saturation by dragging up and down. For the color luminance or the color brightness, click the color cross and hold command key or for Windows user, the window key. Then click the cross at the color you want to adjust the luminance and then dragging up and down to adjust. If you want to change the skin tone color, you easily click on any skin tone part and then drag up and down or you can also adjust the saturation or the luminance. When adjusting the hue, keep an eye on the vector scope in order to keep the skin tones in a line, which should be on the long line here. In order to exit the vector scope, simply press the escape key on the keyboard. We're coming now to batch processing, which allows you to batch and match all your photos in your project. All the adjustments are then applied to the entire group after you corrected one photo. Let's start by choosing a color on the left panel, then selecting all the photos for this color group. The first image is the hero photo, which should be the photo you corrected before. You then can copy and paste all the correction from this hero photo to all the image in the group. In the side-by-side -side comparison view, the hero photo will be shown on the left left side and the uncorrected photo on the right side. When you click copy correction under the hero photo, you can then transfer or paste the adjustment photo by photo or apply it to the entire color group. It is also possible to correct the photos even further. If you see there are like brightness or color difference, you can use then the scope to match them perfectly. Check the waveform since you have one for the hero and the other photo, while the vector scope indicates red for the hero and the green for the other photo. After we have done the basic correction and batch processing or matching the photos in the group, we reach the last step which is final grading. In final grading we can take your photos and add a an filmy or a moody look. Keep in mind if you have multiple photos in your group, the final grading will be applied to all the photos in the group. So let's stylize. Now let's open the look selection panel on the left where you can choose between looks and LUTs. PhotoCrate's best feature is the real life preview of all the looks and LUTs so you can see how it would look with them applied. Looks are based on objectives as PhotoCrate gives you all the moods to set an angry, afraid or happy mood, time of days, genre, location, which is just one click away or you use color schemes. Yes, these color schemes and stock film emulation looks extremely strong in the preview, but this is on purpose. 
so you can really see the difference what the looks are doing. Using these color schemes will give you the different version of the mood you want to convey with your photos. Please let me know in the comments later if you would like to have a detailed video about the color schemes and the stock emulations, how to use them and what you can do there. So if you choose one of them, let's say this one, you can now adjust the intensity for the look with the mix slider on the inspector panel to get more of the natural colors back until you like the look. For fine tuning the colors, you can also use the vector tool with pressing V for changing the color hue or holding shift for lowering the saturation of the color area. You can also adjust the final exposure, saturation and contrast. I really love how this looks like now. In the top right corner, you can see before and after comparison. What a different, this is brilliant. Creative LUTs. Earlier I showed you how to add your own LUTs. Here's where you can see and use them. Go to the LUT gallery to view all your LUTs in the real-time LUT preview. I would like to use this till an orange LUT here. When you have applied your LUT you want, you also can adjust the intensity with the mix slider for the LUT in the inspector panel. I usually go down to 50-65%, depends how strong you want to have the LUT applied. What you can see here in the inspector panel, you can change the exposure, saturation, contrast or you can also change the color hue. As as an add-on for 50 bucks or including in the studio version, you can also apply film grain for organic film texture in your photos to create a film look which looks similar to a film photo then. Alright guys, we went through the entire program. It's time to save your project if you want to change the settings later on. Next to save or export the photo, click the save button on the top right corner. Photocrate will then rename the original file or copy with the ending under slash score and your edit photo has the same file name as the original original photo. You're wondering why. This way when you use Lightroom you can see the edit version straight away and you not have to import the photo or synchronize the folder in Lightroom again. In the menu bar under files you can save your projects. You also have the option to save gathering project files and grades. What does it mean? It will save the photos and the grading and the project file on a separate folder. If you import it from Lightroom into the photo grade, in this case it will save the original file and the edit file with the project together on one place. Your original photo in Lightroom will be stay unedited. This is only if you save as gathering photos. This is perfect if you have a gallery of like 100 wedding photos and you want to save them in one folder. You have also the option to just export the graded photos or you can export all graded images as JPEG, TIFFs or PNG or the same source as you have it in Photograde. You also can add and insert the images here, remove or replace the current image or export your graded image. Summary and my thoughts about Photograde. Alright guys, we went through the entire program. Is Photograde worth the money? I would say hell yeah. And what do you think about it? It is a really cool software that given you the photo and the outstanding look in a short time. Now it's my favorite photo editing software for creating film looks or to getting the look I want by combining the shortcuts with photo point and click grading and the real time LUT previews for my photos. For Photograde, in the future I would love to see the compatibility with DNG files and all the edits being saved automatically in the metadata. Lightroom also has this feature and I totally love it. However, this may not be as simple as it seems. The overall experience with Photograde has been excellent. So feel free to check it out and don't forget the free shortcut PDF and of course the 20% discount using Mike, which are all listed down below in the description. Feel free to give it a try, it was a lot of fun to create this video and I will do more videos explaining my editing process with Photograde. Let me know how you feel about Photograde. Thanks for watching, please don't forget to like and subscribe so I can keep making videos like this. If you have any further question, please let me know in the comments down below. And until then, I see you in the next video. Peace out.